Hello again and welcome to another bread video. This time I'm going to show you how I make my ciabatta bread. It's a pretty simple bread to make but it can be a little awkward to handle. But with a little practice you soon get used to it. It'll also be an advantage if you have a stand mixer but not essential. I'll address that problem a little later. Ok, the first job in making a good tasty ciabatta bread is to prepare the pelish or sponge the night before. Out of the main ingredients list, start by adding 200 grams, that's 7 ounces, of the water, followed by the same in strong white bread flour. Then add the quarter teaspoon of instant or active dried yeast. If you're using fresh yeast, that's 7 grams or quarter of an ounce. And give that a good mix. A quick word on measuring the ingredients. I always weigh my ingredients, especially the water, as it's much more accurate than cups or measuring jugs. So try to use scales instead of converting my measurements, and you can't go wrong. Right, once that's all mixed, to cover the bowl I use a shower cap for this and put it on the top shelf of your fridge for at least 12 hours. This stage adds a lot of flavour and structure to the finished bread. Right, it's the next morning and the pelish has been in the fridge for the last 14 hours. Ok, now it's time to use the mixer. But like I said in the intro to the video, if you don't have a mixer then you'll have to do it this way. Right, for those without a mixer, do everything I've done so far. Now instead of it all going into a mixer, just add the pelish and the remainder of the ingredients to a separate bowl. Which should be, if you've got your pelish measurements correct, 240 grams or 8.5 ounces of water, 350 grams or 12.5 ounces of flour, and of course the salt. Now give this a good mix, then cover the bowl and let it rest at room temperature for 3 hours. Unfortunately, that's how long you have to wait if you don't have a mixer. With the mixer, this will take about 6 minutes. Right, as you can see, after spending the night in the fridge, this is what the police should look like. All risen and bubbly. Now, an easy way of transferring the police from this bowl to the mixer bowl is by adding all the water to it first. Then add it to the mixer bowl, followed by the flour and the salt. A quick word on the flour. I've been asked many times, what is strong white bread flour? Strong white bread flour has at least 12% protein in it, unlike all-purpose or plain flour which only has around 10% protein. These flours are ideal for cakes and pastries. So if you check the ingredients list on the side of the flour bag and it has 12% or more protein, then it's strong enough to make bread with. Using the door hook on this kind of door is no good, so use the puddle attachment. Right, mix on slow speed for one minute, then move up to the next speed for a further minute, and then to the next speed for approximately four minutes or until the door starts to release from the sides of the bowl. Ok, after 3 minutes on the fastest speed you can see the dough is starting to release from the bowl. This one should take about another minute. Basically what's happening here is the gluten strands are joining and bonding together accelerated by the motion of the mixer. It's kneading the dough, in other words. For those without a mixer, the three hour waiting time does just about the same thing. Ok, just wet your hands and scrape off the excess dough from the paddle. Most of it should just fall off anyway. Whether you've spent the last three hours waiting or the last six minutes mixing, we're all at the same point now. 
The next stage in making ciabatta bread is to let the dough rest and rise for two and a quarter hours. But the dough needs a quick turn three times, that's every 45 minutes. Start by oiling a large bowl with half a teaspoon of vegetable or olive oil. This will help prevent the dough from sticking too much. I find a wide stainless steel bowl the most comfortable to get my hands in to turn the dough. Then wet your hands and scrape the dough from the mixer bowl to this one. I said at the start of the video this dough is a bit awkward to handle. That's because ciabatta bread is a high hydration bread. In other words, it's a pretty wet dough. In this case, 80% hydration. That's 80% water to 100% flour. And the best way to prevent it sticking is to have wet hands. So have a bowl of warm water ready all the time. And when I say warm water, that's for your comfort. It's got nothing to do with the bread. Okay, that's the first 45 minutes up. Now we'll give the dough a quick turn. And here's my tip of the day coming up. It's a simple solution to a problem that could drive you nuts when working with this kind of dough. Okay, let's try that again. And that's much better. I hope you can see, as sticky as this dough is, it won't stick to your hands if your hands are wet. Okay, I'll cover that up and let that develop for another 45 minutes. As I said in my baguette video, these rest and rise periods are very important to bring out the best possible flavour and structure in the bread. Right, I'll cover that and let that develop for the last 45 minutes. And now I'll prepare the next stage of the process. Ok, this batch of dough will produce two decent sized loaves of ciabatta. Incidentally, ciabatta in Italian simply means slipper. And when you see the finished loaves, you can see why they were named that. Right, back to the bread. Give a clean dry surface a good dusting of flour ready to pour out the dough. You'll also need what's known in the trade as a baker's couche, which simply is a well-floured cloth to rest the dough on for the last 20 minutes before it goes into the oven. I use a tight woven cotton pillowcase for mine. It's a lot cheaper than the real couche cloth and it does the same job. Another bit of equipment you'll need is a couple of these scrapers for shaping and transferring the dough from the bench to the cloth. But unfortunately, you can't lift the dough off with these scrapers as they snag on the cloth. That bit will have to be done by hand, as you'll see a little later. Right, the last 45 minutes is up and it's time for your first bravery test. Don't turn the dough anymore by hand. Just suspend the ball over the floured bench and slowly turn the ball over until the dough gently slips out onto the flour. It may take a few seconds, don't have the ball too high from the bench. Once it comes out I don't have to touch it anymore with my hands at this stage. Now I can start to gently shape it into a square with the scraper. But before shaping it, give it a good dusting of flour to prevent the scrapers from sticking. From now on, any flour that's added is only external flour, so don't be afraid to put plenty on, as it all can be brushed off again when the loaves are cooked. Just keep manipulating the dough from the sides, but don't put any pressure on the top of the dough at all, as you don't want to force any of the gas out of it. It's like working with a giant marshmallow, but it's surprisingly easy to shape. Once it's approximately a square, I'll split it down the middle and gently shape it into two loaves. Right. 
Right, bravery test number two. First, make sure you have plenty of flour on the couche. Now, using both scrapers, slide them in from both ends of the door and quickly but confidently transfer it to the couche. Tidy it up a bit, then fold the cloth up a little to separate and support it and then do the same with the other one. Once you've done this a few times it becomes a lot less intimidating and easier to do. It's all about confidence. Now cover the door with a light tea towel and set the timer for 20 minutes. Okay, when there's about 10 minutes left, set your oven to 230 degrees Celsius, that's 450 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 8. I'm setting mine to 210 Celsius because mine is fan assisted and it runs approximately 20 degrees Celsius hotter than indicated on the dial. Now I normally bake my chapatas on a granite slab, but I realise not everyone has one of those. So I'll do these on a couple of baking trays turned upside down in the oven. You'll also need a tray of hot water in the bottom of the oven and a spray bottle with a little water in. Ok, to transfer the dough to the oven you would normally use a baker's pail. It looks like a wooden shovel. But once again I'm going to show you an alternative and it's this heat resistant lightweight cutting board with a sheet of parchment or grease proof paper on it so that it'll slide straight off in the oven. It works great. You could also use a piece of plywood or heavy cardboard. Right, bravery test number three. Once the 20 minutes are up, uncover the door and using the cloth flip the first door over this is to make sure it's not stuck then gently get your fingers underneath it and move it to the nearby pail then straighten it out a bit and very carefully but quickly let the door and the paper slide off onto the hot baking tray as shown then do the same with the other one give the inside of the oven a couple of sprays as quickly as possible and get the oven door closed to retain the heat Now the spray and the water tray in the bottom of the oven will make the bread nice and crispy. These loaves take between 18 to 25 minutes to cook depending on how well done you like them. So about two thirds of the way through I'm going to turn the loaves back to front and swap the shelves top to bottom. So I'll set the timer for 12 minutes. As you can see the loaves have risen quite a bit. This is called oven spring. So I'll swap them around as quickly and as safely as possible and I'm going to set the timer for a further 6 minutes because that's the way my wife and I like them. But you can experiment how well done you want yours. But I would say a minimum of 18 minutes and a maximum of 25 minutes at this temperature. And there they are, made from only four ingredients, flour, water, yeast and salt. What an amazing transformation, from a sticky mass to this in about three hours. And now you can understand why the Italian word for slipper is ciabatta. Right, I'll just cut one open so you can see what it looks like on the inside. With high hydration bread you always get a large crumb or bubbles in the bread which is what a good ciabatta should look like. These are still a bit warm to cut but I'll have a look anyway. My wife calls this soaky up bread 
and she loves this with homemade pasta and bolognese sauce. I only wish you could smell this too. It's deceiving but these two loaves are not as small as they appear in the video. This one is approximately 12 inches by 6 inches wide and 3 inches deep, so they are pretty large loaves. They also freeze very well too. I've only made two, but you could double or treble the recipe in about the same time frame if you have the oven space to take them. Well, there you go. That's how I make this ciabatta bread. I hope you try it too. So, thanks again for watching. I'll be back with another recipe very soon. Please like, share, comment and maybe subscribe by hitting the circle above. In the meantime, here's some of my other videos you may want to watch. Bye for now.